The Life of Bon, The Seven Deadly Sins. Bon is the fox sin of greed of the Seven Deadly Sins, the husband of Elaine, father of Lancelot, and the king of Benwick. His sacred treasure is the Holy Staff Kurichos. He's known for his super resilience due to both his time spent in purgatory and formerly his immortality, which he gave up in order to resurrect Elaine. Spoilers. We'll get into it. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Bon. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. 30 years ago. Born in Ravens, Bond lived by stealing from others, constantly getting chased and beaten by those he stole from, until eventually being caught one day and sent to Aberdeen Prison. There, a man offered him food, which he accepted, one might say, greedily, even. The man introduced himself as Zhivago and asked Bond's name in return. Bond escaped the prison with Zhivago and lived in his hideout, being fed by the men whenever they met up. He often complained about his parents, who beat and brutalized the young Sin on a daily basis. At some point, he was tricked and kidnapped to be sold to Lord Roxanu, but was saved yet again by Zhivago, who had happened to rob the cargo wagon he was on. Bon asked the man to teach him how to steal, and despite Zhivago warning him of the dangers of such a lifestyle, Bon accepted it. Reluctantly, Zhivago began Bon's education in thievery, though the boy often failed his own attempts. Zhivago also told him stories of legendary heists. Among them was the tale of the Fountain of Youth and its guardian saint, which may have inspired Bon to visit the Fairy King's Forest later on. However, after agreeing to meet at a certain location one day, Bon, who was overtaken by boredom, decided to steal on his own and was eventually caught by Lord Roxanu's guards who beat him to a pulp. I'm starting to sense a theme here. Zhivago saw the boy being beaten severely by the guards, but decided to save his true son rather than Bon, crying for the latter to forgive him. 20 years ago. Before he became a member of the Seven Deadly Sins, Bond, then known as Bandit Bond, wanted to gain immortality, so he climbed the gigantic tree in the Fairy King's Forest, where the Fountain of Youth was located. After climbing to the top, Elaine, the Fountain Garden Saint, tried to stop his quest, believing that he harbored malice, only for Bond to persistently climb back up again and again, with the actions of each annoying and angering the other. He then unsheathed his three-section staff and prepared to fight, seemingly attacking her, but instead, he manipulated his staff to grab the cup that held the water from the fountain. However, before he could drink from it, he was quickly bound to the branches of the trees by Elaine. As soon as he gave up, Elaine realized his lack of malicious feelings by reading his mind and released him. He then informed her of his name and also the reason that he desired immortality. Though his life hadn't been very good up to this point, he felt that if he lived long enough, something good might finally happen to him. Which is fair, I guess, law of averages. During the next seven days, they befriended each other, the two even beginning to develop feelings for one another. During one of their interactions, Bon explained to Elaine that the reason why humans are greedy was that they either want something in order to survive, or to show that they exist in this world. He also takes this time to restate his intent on gaining immortality. Elaine tries to dissuade the bandit, telling Bon that an unending life doesn't necessarily guarantee anything good for the one who has it. She knows this, since she's lived long herself as the artifact's guardian, but nothing good has ever happened to her the drama queen. When he learned of Elaine's desire to leave the forest, he offered to take her outside. She, however, denied this offer, explaining that she has to protect the fountain, as she's taken the place of her brother in the position. Hearing this, Bond's like, well, why don't I just go find your brother and then bring him here and then we can leave? And she's like, oh, I never thought of it like that. In her response, she hugs him, much to his surprise. He's kind of new at the whole being likable thing at this point in his life. Immediately stopping their conversation, a demon suddenly appeared and begun to burn the Fairy King's forest with his purgatory fire. Instructing Elaine to get to the Fountain of Youth and escape, Bon used his three-section staff to remove the heart of the demon with one hit, which, however, didn't kill it since demons have more than one heart. It then used its claws to fatally wound both Bon and Elaine, who in desperation gave him the cup which held the water from the Fountain of Youth. Since he didn't have the strength to drink the water due to his wound, Elaine made him drink it through a kiss, thus making him immortal, and apparently also invincible. When his wounds healed due to his newly gained ability, he angrily and quickly killed the demon with his weapon. As the whole forest burned due to the demon's purgatory fire, a dying Elaine gave him an Almoca seed, which was the forest's last seed, asking him to plant it somewhere. He then declared that he would make her his, but was cut off ever so rudely by her dying. Sometime later, Bon planted the seed and it grew into a new forest for the fairies to live in, and they named him King. However, this rule was cut short as he was put on death row for apparently destroying the forest himself, drinking from the Fountain of Youth, and killing Elaine. 
After being asked for any last words by the captain of the Executioner Knights, he simply said that his name was wrong and that he wasn't Bandit Bon, he was Bon the Undead. Sick name, bro. 16 years ago. After his imprisonment, Bon was executed a total of 33 times with all of the executions having no effect on him due to his immortality. Sometime later, Meliodas arrives at Bon's cell, intending to have the convict join him, and was warned by Bon's guards of the man's immortality. When Meliodas entered the cell, Bon, thinking that another execution was to be performed, told him that he would just sit as he was executed, only to find that the individual who entered was a child. The young man then asked Bon to come with him, but he refused, saying that nothing existed for him outside, only for Meliodas to declare that he would take him out by force. Bon calmly stated that he wouldn't restrain his strength even against a child. Their battle ended with Bon being punched out of his cell. This overjoyed Bon while requesting that they continue their battle. After hearing Meliodas' ultimatum that he would have to join him to continue their contest of strength, Bon continued to smile, sorta of implying that he only joined his captain just so he could continue fighting him. Fifteen years ago. At some point in time, Bon went through a phase of collecting stuffed animals where he stole every single stuffed animal in the kingdom, justifying his small act by saying that he worked hard as a knight. This act, however, greatly angered King, who complained that the little children throughout the town were crying. After Bon finally fell asleep, King silently returned all of the stuffed toys to the children. Since then, Bon was followed by King wherever he went, much to his displeasure, while giving the people the impression that they were some sort of dynamic duo. Twelve years ago. After he became a member of the Seven Deadly Sins, Bon once took interest in Meliodas' sword because his captain never let his sword out of his sight. He tried to steal it while the sins rested after defeating a tyrant dragon. He was then attacked by Meliodas and given a lasting wound despite his regenerative abilities. That would become his only scar, which he calls a special case. Ten years ago. Ten years before Meliodas and Elizabeth's meeting, their meeting that kicks off the main series, not the other reincarnations, just watch the Meliodas video. Bon, along with the rest of the Seven Deadly Sins, were summoned to a castle to meet the Great Holy Knight, Zaratras. After they found him dead there, they were ambushed by all the Holy Knights in the kingdom, with Bon later being able to escape under orders by his captain to disperse and later regroup in order to figure out the real culprit behind the Great Holy Knight's murder. Five years ago. Desiring the feeling of pain that could make him feel alive, Bon intentionally let himself be captured by the Weird Fangs, who then imprisoned him within the Baste dungeon and lost his sacred treasure after his capture. Bon actually escaped from Baste on several occasions to give blood to the Fairy King's forest, but he was recaptured each time. Introduction Arc Bon's wanted poster is displayed on a board inside the boar hat. That's it. That's the whole arc. Hard-hitting reporting from us at the Amagi. Anyway, Forest of White Dreams arc. Bon is first mentioned by Gilthunder to have been imprisoned in the Baste dungeon. After Meliodas and Gilthunder's fight, Bon is shown to be chained to a prison, with his guards remarking that he hasn't moved or eaten anything since his imprisonment, which was five years ago. You know, a better guard might probably would have checked to see if he was dead. It just seems like something that would make sense to, to do. Baste dungeon arc. When he hears that Meliodas is alive, Bon, wanting to meet his captain, easily escaped from his prison cell and was immediately confronted by Jericho, who tried to kill him. Bon easily dodged all of Jericho's slashes and even purposely let her cut his hair. When Jericho is shocked that he dodged her attacks despite his severe wounds, Bon shows her that they've already healed and points to his scar as the only scar he ever received. Bon then took Jericho's armor and clothes in an attempt to find decent armor before leaving. Bon left the Baste dungeon and encountered Meliodas, Deanne, Hawk, and Elizabeth. He and Meliodas then greeted, high-fived each other, and then started arm wrestling, which resulted in the entire dungeon being destroyed. Afterwards, he told Meliodas that he was glad to see him again. With the dungeon destroyed, he, along with the others and the imprisoned villagers, headed to Delmari Town, where he went off on his own, stealing a set of red-studded clothes from a random villager. Later that night, Bon was introduced to Elizabeth, and noticed that Hawk is a talking pig, which is pretty hard to miss. Well, it shocked him anyway. During the ensuing party, he started drinking and even rode on top of Hawk. Together with the rest of the group, he looked up at the sky to see it filled with shooting stars, falling asleep on Hawk soon after. Capital of the Dead Arc Three days later, Bon, along with the rest of the party, left Elmari Town, Elizabeth's recovery having caused their delay. In the town nearest to the necropolis, Bon was assigned to cook in the boar hat, though he expressed several complaints, which were then promptly ignored. After he escaped from work, Bon headed into town and discovered a little girl, Ellen, whom he mistook for his dead lover, Elaine. She suddenly collapsed, leading him to rush by her side. Ellen's brother Luigi... Luigi? Luigi. 
believed that Bon was going to take her away and attacked him. When he learned of the truth, he apologetically questioned Bon as to how he can erase his sin. Bon responded that a real sin can never be erased. Bon was then suddenly stabbed in the chest by King's spear. Bon questioned his assailant's identity, to which King replied, calling him Bon the Undead, and revealed that Bon had killed the Saint of the Fountain of Youth to gain immortality. The two then engaged in battle, and after it had continued tensely for a while, Bon prepared to utilize a special ability, which Meliodas quickly stops. The Sin of Wrath and Deanne recognize King immediately, despite his changed appearance, with Bon being completely shocked and unable to comprehend how the boy he fought with was actually King. Later, after King escaped, Bon cooked a meal for the children inside the boar hat, and the children informed them that King had tried many times to enter the capital of the dead. With regards to entering it, Ellen then recited a riddle, stating that a priceless memory shared with the deceased will open the path to the capital. Bon thanked them, and the group headed to the entrance to the capital. At the entrance's supposed location, the group noticed flowers that had suddenly and mysteriously bloomed. The petals of the flowers then swirl around them in a circular fashion, transporting them to the capital of the dead. Bon immediately notices a girl and chases her with King, in turn following Bon. As he's chasing the girl, King provokes Bon, leading the latter to attack the former. However, King easily dodges Bon's attacks, finally convincing Bon of him being King. King narrates how he came to discover his hometown to have been burned to the ground, then trapping Bon by transforming his pillow into a giant stuffed bear, and angrily reveals that the guardian saint whom Bon killed was his sister. When Bon, in response, declares that he's immortal, King uses a form of his sacred treasure that petrifies all whom it impales. Bon's skin around the impaled area is shown to have been petrified. Soon, Bon turns completely into a statue. As King begins to leave, he notices spheres of light approaching Bon, and he recognizes the spheres to be Elaine, his sister, and the guardian saint of the fountain. She kisses Bon in order to break King's curse. They exchange their greetings when King confusingly yells at him, questioning whether Elaine was still angry at him. The three are then distracted by a huge explosion some distance away. Noticing that a holy knight has arrived, Bon proceeds to head there, but only before telling Elaine that he'll definitely make her his someday. Bon then enters the battle and assists Meliodas and Deanne by appearing to immobilize the Holy Knight who follows them to the capital of the dead, Gila, by using his ability, Snatch, on her rapier. Gila's retaliation heavily wounds him, but he regenerates within a few moments, leading her to comment upon his immortality. As the battle continues, Gila stabs him in the neck while commenting how weak the three seven deadly sins were. However, King then arrives and attacks Gila by stabbing Bon through his back with his spear. King explains that he had arrived to help the Sins, to which Bon sarcastically thanks him, and adds that this is for Meliodas and Deanne, and also due to Elaine's feelings for Bon. Though Bon initially seems to be angered by King wanting to fight Gila alone, he quickly complies. Bon and the two watch as King defeats Gila with ease. As soon as she's defeated, everyone's bodies start disintegrating, the capital of the dead having begun to reject them due to them being alive and not belonging there. Bon says his final goodbyes to Elaine before returning to the living world along with the rest. Later, Bon is shown to be drunk when King asks him, Deanne, and Meliodas as to what happened to their sacred treasures, with which the three would have been easily able to defeat Gila. Bon drunkenly responds that his was stolen during his imprisonment, much to King's irritation. Visal Fight Festival Arc the next day, Bon is shown to still be drunk at the Boar Hat. Later, Bon accompanies Meliodas, Hawk, and King into Visal while wearing an apron due to his shirt having been destroyed in the Capital of the Dead. While there, a drunk elderly man directs them to the annual fighting tournament, whose reward is the weapon that no one can use, which is revealed to be Deanne's sacred treasure, Gideon. Bon and Meliodas eagerly join the tournament. Bon enters the names of the three, including King, under false names and against King's will. During the preliminaries, Bon, while commenting the battles to be boring, easily defeats many other fighters and stole a new shirt similar to his previous one from an unfortunate man that he just met. During the determination of the matchups, he's revealed to have entered King himself and Meliodas under the names of Old Fart, much to King's annoyance, Bon with two A's, and Meliodas. After the third battle, Bon finally readies himself for his battle against Meliodas. Bon seems to have been pushed out of the ring but regains his balance and proceeds to exchange a series of attacks with Meliodas. One of Meliodas' retaliations sends Bon crashing into the ring and even breaks the Great Visal Rock on which the ring is located. As the battle continues in Bon's favor, Meliodas, lifting Bon with one hand, smashes him repeatedly on the ground. Meliodas attacks Bon with a barrage of punches and the latter continues stealing the former's abilities. In the end, all of Meliodas' abilities are shown to have been stolen before he's able to defeat Bon as the Sin of Greed smirks while standing over his collapsed and weakened captain. 
Despite Elizabeth's pleading, Bond punches Meliodas. In the midst of the resulting dust and debris, Meliodas, who now mysteriously has a strange black-colored mark on his forehead and his eyes colored black, crushes Bond's hand, then proceeding to send him flying out of the ring with a single punch, thus defeating him. Bond laments his defeat and his having forgotten about what he calls his captain's trump card. Hawk then unwittingly carries Bond to the ring due to him feeling his body to be very heavy after using physical hunt. Bond enthusiastically watches Meliodas and the enraged Deanne fight. Sometime afterward, Meliodas stopping the fight declares his identity and that he'll now be taking over Visal. Bond and King enter the stage and are immediately recognized due to their appearances. Meliodas continues, ordering everyone to leave Visal in one minute lest they be massacred. A few brief moments later, several gigantic and explosive flares rain down on the town. The attackers are shown to be Gila, Jericho, and another holy knight, Marmus. While the attacks continue, Bond is sent crashing into a building by a surprise attack from Jericho. He expresses his enthusiasm to fight, but also asks Jericho if they've met before, and she declares that she'll carve her name into his heart, which is not an answer to his question. Jericho's subsequent introduction reminds Bond of her. He, believing that she's male from their previous encounter, questions whether she cross-dresses and kicks her away. Much to his surprise, his wound does not heal despite his regenerative abilities. Jericho, stating that the deadly sins are no match for the reactors, attacks Bond as he dodges. Walking towards Bond, she states that she no longer has to pretend to be a man, since she was now powerful. She kicks him in his chest and spreads a drop of blood which spurted from his lips as a substitute for lipstick. She states that Bond had made her into a woman. In anger, Jericho prepares to attack Bond when he yells out to them to prepare for Meliodas' attack, which knocks them both away. As Elizabeth and Hawk watch in horror as Meliodas is defeated by Helbrum, Bond grabs King and tells Elizabeth that they have to retreat. Elizabeth refuses to leave Meliodas behind, but Bond grabs her and tells her it's too dangerous to be around, proceeding to run away from the fight. Soon after, Deanne finds the wounded Meliodas and in her rage ends up completely destroying Visal with her sacred treasure Gideon, while Bond and the rest are still running away. After Deanne saves Meliodas, Elizabeth and Hawk watch in shock at what happened to Visal while he reminds them how he said it was too dangerous for them to be around. Armor Giant Arc After the Boar Hat stops at an unknown location, Bon and King start training together to improve themselves after the events at Visal. Later, the Deadly Sins overhear a dying knight, screaming that there's an armored giant at the mountain which has easily annihilated his group. Meliodas then reveals to everyone that the armored giant is the goat sin of lust, Gother. King, Meliodas, and Bon head to the forest to find Gother, where they see him having a standoff against the Dawn Roar. The Deadly Sins then head to the battlefield. Bond rushes towards Weinheit to stop him from shooting down Gother with his arrow. However, Weinheit turns out to be an illusion, informing Bond that the Dawn Roar knew about them hiding in the forest. The real Weinheit, hiding in a pile of dead bodies, shoots Gother with a powerful magical arrow, but the arrow is caught midway by Armando, who then reveals himself to be the real Gother to the shock of the Sins. Excited, Bond walks toward Gother and tells him that he always thought he was a big old man under the armor. Gother expresses his surprise that Meliodas didn't change over the years, which Bond points out he doesn't look surprised, and also didn't know that the little kid is king until he changed back into his fat form. Once Gother offers the giant head to the Dawn Roar and they leave, Gother tells everyone that the monster was most likely human, which shocks them. The monster later gets up, despite being headless, and Gother further reveals that he used to be a holy knight. Bond decides to kill the beast himself until Meliodas stops him, saying that the beast is still partly human. But Bond doesn't listen and removes the beast's heart with his whip. Meliodas gets upset with Bond for killing the beast, but Bond tells them that they should have just put it out of its misery. King then points out that the beast is mumbling something despite having lost its heart and starts releasing a lot of power. Bond then wonders why removing the beast's heart didn't work and realizes... Demons have multiple hearts. While Meliodas tries to reason with Dale, Bond pushes him out of the way and gets cut in half. After Bond heals himself, he punches Meliodas and tells him he should stop being naive or everyone they know will die. Elizabeth then appears and offers Liz's sword to Meliodas, which he finally uses to slay the beast in one hit. Bond then goes to search the body, where he finds a strange plant which attempts to attack him, but he crushes it with ease and overhears Dale thanking him. The Deadly Sins later take Gother to meet with Deanne and hold a celebration party. Gother later uses Invasion's searchlight on Bond, which reveals that Bond robbed Deanne and King's strength during the past battle while drunk, with Deanne angrily squeezing him and King stabbing his legs for doing so. Kingdom Infiltration Arc As Meliodas explains his reasons to head to Leonis and get his sword back, a mysterious Holy Knight appears out of nowhere and takes Elizabeth, saying that she was the last key to the Coffin of Eternal Darkness. 
After his initial outburst, Meliodas orders Deanne to toss him to Leonis, with Bon and Gother deciding to tag along for their own reasons. Deanne tosses the trio toward Leonis at full speed, with Bon screaming that he might die of such speed. Soon after, Meliodas, Bon, and Gother land near Leonis and start running toward the kingdom, with Holy Knights aware of their arrival trying to stop them. To be fair, they didn't take the most subtle mode of transportation. Meliodas tells Gother and Bon that their mission is to save Elizabeth and keep the fighting to a minimum. Bon wonders if Meliodas will be going all out, with Meliodas responding that, uh, yeah, he will. The sins briefly stop when they feel a large power coming from the southern gate of the kingdom, which turns out to be the Camelot army led by Arthur Pendragon. Later, the trio continue to cut through the Holy Knights as they attempt to break through to the castle. Deciding to end this with minimal bloodshed, Gother uses his sacred treasure Herod to overwrite the memories of the attacking Holy Knights and turns them into their allies. Gother explains this technique to the bewildered Meliodas and Bond, who then warn him to not use that on them no matter what, to which Gother complies. The trio sneak away from the Holy Knights and go into hiding to figure out a decent strategy. Bond tells Meliodas that they should head to the Leonis castle because in fairy tales, the princess always gets locked in the underground prisons. Meliodas agrees to this plan and heads out to the castle. The trio then sends a battle going on by the south gate, which changes Meliodas' mind and he decides to head over there, thinking Elizabeth could be there. He, he's really just going with his gut on, on all of this. The trio see Ground Gladius suddenly rise in the middle of the kingdom and realize it's one of Deanne's abilities and collectively wonder if she's in trouble. Gother offers to go and help her while Meliodas and Bond save Elizabeth. Meliodas and Bond stop in their tracks when they see giant roots attacking a section of the kingdom where Deanne, Gother, and King are located. Bond asks Meliodas if he can sense it, which Meliodas nods. He then mentions that Deanne and Gother's powers are fading, but King's has risen to an incredible level. Bond and Meliodas then decide to split up to cover more ground, with Bond heading off to the castle and Meliodas to fight Hendrickson. Bon walks into the entrance and finds Leonis' treasure, the Horn of Cernanos, and is surprised by its great size. Bon calls out for a goddess and asks if they could exchange his own life to revive Elaine from the dead. Bon then hears a voice and is shocked to see Hawk standing on the horn. After Hawk explains to him how he ended up there, he suggests he leaves and saves Elizabeth, but Bon tells him to go ahead without him. Bon thinks he can't just give up like that, and that there must be something he can do to revive Elaine, and at that moment a voice speaks from the horn, this time not Hawk, telling him that there is indeed something that he can do. The goddess tells him that due to the ancient war, they lost their power and will need to regain their physical forms. Bon is skeptical about the goddess so easily agreeing to take his life and bring Elaine back to life, but the goddess tells him that she won't take his life, but will ask him to go on a mission, and if he succeeds, she'll bring the fairy back to life. Hawk protests, telling Bon that it sounds shady, but receives a double shut-up from both Bon and the Goddess. Bon then tells the Goddess that he agrees to do the mission. The Goddess tells Bon that his mission, should he choose to accept it, will be to kill a certain man. She also tells him that this will benefit the four clans. Bon tells her that he already said he'll do what she wants. The Goddess then reveals that the one he must kill right now goes by the name of... Meliodas from the Seven Deadly Sins. Dun dun dun! Of course, this deeply shocks Bon. Bon later appears at the battlefield where Elizabeth had just been taken by Hendrickson, armed with a three section staff. When Bon and Hawk approach Meliodas, Meliodas and Hawk agree to go rescue Elizabeth and ask Bon for help. However, Bon starts to attack Meliodas to the latter's shock, ripping his arm off. They exchange blows, and Meliodas snatches his arm back, using his demon powers to reattach it to his body. As Bon witnesses Meliodas' ability, he asks Meliodas if he's from the Demon Clan, to which Meliodas uh, doesn't respond, with Bon taking that as a yes. Hawk confronts Bon, asking if he'll really do what the Horn ordered him to do, asking if Meliodas is even his friend. Bon tells Hawk that Meliodas is his greatest friend, but he wants Elaine to come back. Upset by this, Hawk says that if Elaine doesn't come back, he'll lose his friend and Elaine might not be happy about this. Bon told Hawk what he should do, as when Elaine died, he was depressed, but when he met the Deadly Sins, he kept himself distracted, but he still knew that he'd be alone forever, be it in this world or the next, saying that this world without her is like hell. Hawk doesn't understand this, but Meliodas says he does, but said that they should put their fight on hold until they solve the current matter as the Deadly Sins, which Bon says he understands. As Meliodas orders Hawk to carry him to Elizabeth's location in Merlin's old castle, Bon tells Hawk to take care of Meliodas while he helps out with the current problem. Bon finds the poison Gilthunder, who he grabbed and tossed at the demonic Jericho, which alarmed Margaret, Leonis, and Vivian. 
Deanne is annoyed at Bond's actions until he tosses a hyper-recovering spell he got from Visal at Diane and Gil Thunder, which healed them quick, but quickly realized that he should have used it on Meliodas. Bond then tells King to take his fight against the revived slaved Helbrim seriously due to Meliodas' orders. Bond faces the hybrid demon Jericho, who her brother Gustav begged him to not kill her, while Jericho pled to kill her as she doesn't want to live as a monster for her life. Bond grins as he said he'll end her life as he used his three-section staff to strike her, but instead of killing her, Bond removed a strange plant which he destroyed as Jericho returned to normal while Bond said he ended her life as a holy knight, saying that she shouldn't hold it against him. Bond rejoins the other deadly sins at Merlin's old castle to face Hendrickson in the final battle. While the Sins, Meliodas, King, and Deanne were fighting against Hendrickson, Bond questions Gother how Hendrickson can gain demonic powers, which Gother explains that Hendrickson gained them through a demon corpse, as Gila told him. Bond was surprised to hear what Gother said until Hendrickson slams Bond against a wall, where Bond discovers the red demon corpse that he slayed many years ago. Bond walks toward Hendrickson and furiously slams him against the wall and asks where he got the corpse, and the wall breaks down to reveal the red demon corpse. The Deadly Sins were shocked to see the corpse as Hendrickson explains that he found it in the Fairy King forest long ago and how much of a blessing it was to him. Hendrickson uses the power of the Red Demon and nearly stabs the Deadly Sins. However, Bond uses this opportunity to get closer to Hendrickson and slam him to the ground while furiously telling him that he can't beat him since he was the one who killed the Red Demon. When Hendrickson was sent underground, Bond destroyed the Red Demon in anger while King questions Bond about the Red Demon, but Bond responds that it doesn't matter. As they follow Hendrickson underground, they can still sense him and something with greater power. The Deadly Sins travel inside to discover Hendrickson, who revealed that he has another demon underground that he discovered years ago, which was a large sunflower-headed demon known as a Grey Demon, which is much higher in power than the Red Demon. Hendrickson took a blood sample from the Grey Demon's corpse and injected it into himself, which resulted in gaining a tremendous power boost from the demon. Bond still attacked Hendrickson despite the warning Meliodas gives him, and half of his body blows up with ease. As Hendrickson slaughters the Holy Knights, Bond manages to regain his body, but is soon sliced in half again by Hendrickson. When the latter is about to use Dead End on Meliodas, Bond yells out for his captain to not die, as he's the only one who gets to kill him. But when Hawk took the hit and died, Bond shot out tears, yelling at Hendrickson for killing Hawk as he was a good-natured pig. When Elizabeth unlocks her hidden power and heals everyone, Meliodas thinks of a plan and asks Gother to use his ability to spread the message, which Gother does through broadcast. As a result, Bond attacks Meliodas just like everyone else. It's revealed that Meliodas is charging up for a revenge counter, as it's Meliodas' ultimate technique, and it finally kills Hendrickson, ending his reign. After the King, Bartra Leonis returns and thanks the Deadly Sins, Bond goes to grieve over Hawk's death, feeling terrible for saying that the two weren't friends. However, Gother logically explains to the Fox's sin of greed that if the Captain had died instead of Hawk, their chances of victory would have been diminished, and Hawk's death didn't even affect the fighting prowess of the group and considers it to be not much of a loss. This angers Bond as he's about to strike Gother for saying that, but Merlin gets in the way and defends the Goat's sin of lust. However, when Hawk's body that was covered in black matter starts to fade, it's revealed that Hawk is alive, but shrunken, which brings great joy to everyone, especially Bond. Post-Kingdom Infiltration Arc after Meliodas and Gil Thunder chat for a bit, Bond decides to tell Meliodas that he's not just leaving the Boar Hat, but quitting the Seven Deadly Sins, to Meliodas' surprise. The next day, while everyone wears their new outfits, Bond refuses to wear his, and King and Deanne get very angry as they picked out the outfit for him. The Deadly Sins end up celebrating at the festival while working at the Boar Hat, but as the next morning comes, Bond wears his new outfit and says farewell to the group as he's about to leave the Deadly Sins. However, King comforts him and tells him to let Elaine's death go, which Bond refuses and tells King that he's going back to the Fairy King's forest, much to King's shock. However, King doesn't believe Bond, as the latter tends to lie to him a lot and he saw the burned down forest ten years ago, but Bond decided to leave him and went on his journey. Having trouble believing Bond, King followed the bandit in order to find out the truth, despite meaning leaving the group for a short period of time. While following Bond, they spotted Jericho, who was following them as she was still mad at Bond for stripping her clothes and power from before. As the three journey together, Jericho questions the existence of the fairies in the forest, which King realizes that she was born after the forest was burned down. As a fog appears out of nowhere, Bond tells King and Jericho that they're here, much to their shock. They then find themselves in the newly made Fairy King's forest, to King's great joy, as he also spotted his old fairy friends, Siska, Ende, and Melek. However, King was greatly shocked and saddened to find out that his friends hate him for leaving the forest for 700 years and now believe that Bond is their new fairy king instead of, you know, King, the rightful heir. 
Bon, along with Jericho and King, enter deeper into the forest as they found Elaine's grave, which brings tears to King as he flees the area, but Bon goes closer to Elaine's corpse and embraces it, claiming that he'll still find a way to revive her. When the fairies offer to help Bon revive Elaine as his followers, Bon brushes it off, saying that he's not their king and that King is their king. But the fairies refuse, saying King is a traitor while Bon is the hero who saved the forest. However, Bon gives them a dirty look, claiming that someone like him can't be the king, as he tried to kill his only friend to revive one woman, bringing silence to the fairies. Albion Arc After visiting Elaine's grave, Bon found King arguing with himself, which made Bon think that he's going crazy, not realizing that King is speaking with Helbrum's spirit. Later, King asks Jericho when she's planning to leave, as only a few selected humans are allowed to be in the forest, to which Jericho replies that whenever Bon goes, Bon reveals that he wasn't going back to the Boar Hat, as he was planning on going on a journey to find a way to bring Elaine back alive, which Jericho offered to come along as his disciple, as she owes him a debt, which he refuses. However, King tries to convince Bon to return by asking Merlin for help or to fix his relationship with Meliodas, which Bon refuses, once again. Bon then teases King, saying that he should return to the Boar Hat as Deanne will die of loneliness if King isn't with her, which makes King mad for teasing him until Bon reveals that it's true when a few days ago, Deanne admitted that she's lonely without King while King went out to get supplies. King was in shock at this news as he believes Deanne somehow regained her lost memories of him, to which Bon smiles and tells him to go home. Bon goes back into the forest and Elaine's grave to give some of his blood to keep the tree healthy. Raven's Ark Later, he's seen at the port town Ivanloke, where he requests a miracle drug to revive the dead. The shop owner, however, tells him that he heard rumors of a dead person coming back to life. Bon asks him the name of the town, and the shopkeeper tells him that it's the Bandit City Ravens. At a bar in the city, Jericho shouts at the sleeping bandit, who forcefully awakes, heading back to the inn, hence they didn't get information out of the bar. Bon rents a room and tells the owner that Jericho will be paying. He asks the owner about the rumors, but the man terrifyingly denies. Jericho complains about the room that they're given, but Bon tells her it's on higher standards than the usual in this city. He tells her that he lived in this city when he was a kid, and before Jericho could ask more, his attention was dragged by the ruckus outside where someone was getting beaten up. Jericho wonders if they should help out, but Bon tells her to not stick her nose in it. However, as soon as he heard that that person was the one who revived a dead person, Bon beats up the bandits and takes the man to the inn, throwing him to the floor, and he's revealed to be a werefox. Bon speaks out about how the Beastman escaped the bandit's abuse and proceeded to return Jericho's wallet, which the Werefox had stolen. Bon asks the Beast if he had revived a dead person like he had heard, but the Beastman denies that rumor, but collapses to the floor a moment later and is quickly rushed to bed. The Beast tells him that they, humans, will never understand what it's like to live off stealing alone, which causes Bon to reminisce. While the Beastman tells his story, Bon listens carefully until the Beastman mentions his two sons and how he had betrayed one of them. After he finishes his story, Bon reassures the ill Beastman that he's not angry at him, nor did he ever despise him for a moment, which startles the Beastman, whom Bon has at this point recognized as Zhivago, his father figure, embracing him soon after. After a heartwarming father and son reunion, Zhivago and Bon talk about the rumors of dead people coming back to life, such as a deceased wife who strangled her husband to death and an order of killed knights wandering around. Zhivago notices Jericho and asks if she's Bond's lover, but Bond bluntly denies to her dismay. Zhivago notices Bond's physique of a 20-year-old when he's supposed to be in his 40s, which Bond confirms that he drank from the Fountain of Youth and became immortal, much to Zhivago's shock, confirming its existence to the old beast man. However, Bond tells Zhivago about what he did to Meliodas to save Elaine, and how Meliodas forgave him even though he doesn't deserve it. Zhivago tells Bond that he has such a wonderful friend, continuing that he should not hate himself and that he should just ask for forgiveness. Zhivago says that these are his last words to him as his father, leaving to join his son in the afterlife. Later, Bon is seen with Jericho after burying the old bandit, telling him to rest peacefully and pouring beer on his grave. He then ends up saving Jericho from a reanimated human who he deduces to be stronger than a standard man. After he crushes the corpse's head, he turns to Jericho where he notices her being attacked. He intercepts and takes the attack head on and is surprised to see Elaine. They share an intimate moment with one another. Still startled, Elaine tells Bond that she wanted to see him again, and they resume kissing. A flustered Jericho asks what's going on, and Bond reassures her that this is Elaine, and that he wouldn't die of physical attacks. Elaine proceeds to attack Jericho, to which Bond tells her that she's not an enemy. Elaine refuses to listen and continues to attack Jericho. Bond begins to protect Jericho from Elaine as he tries to persuade her to stop. After hearing Jericho's speech, Elaine cries until Bond embraces her. He reminds her of his promise that he would one day make her his, and reassures her that they'll go on a journey together. 
Relieved, Elaine loses consciousness in Bond's arms. After hearing a mysterious voice which states that Elaine would die soon, Bond turns to face both Galen and Melascula. He pieces together what's happened and swears that he's going to kill them for what they did to Elaine. Bond pulls his three-section staff towards him, but Galen cuts him in half before he has a chance to move. After knowing of the Commandment's defeat by Meliodas, Bond comments on their mentioning Meliodas' relation to the Demon Clan. A furious Galan asks how he's still alive, to which Bond replies that he's immortal. Bond's body is then seen using Fox Hunt, catching the Commandments off guard and ripping out one of their hearts. He then grabs Jericho and Elaine and retreats while the demons are temporarily injured. After traveling a few dozen miles, Bond collapses due to exhaustion. As Jericho carries Bond and Elaine away, Galan and Melascula start toying with them by throwing boulders at their location. They miss twice before the third one hits the ground and sends the group tumbling off a cliff. Thanks to Elaine, the three of them land safely near a dark cave. Inside the cave is an open bar with a lone bartender inside. As they enter, the bartender greets them to his store, My Sweet Gluttony. The bartender, who recognizes Bond, backs away until Jericho tells him that the Seven Deadly Sins are no longer considered criminals. The bartender urgently asks about Merlin's condition, but is left hanging as Galan and Melascula find the bar. Bond, Jericho, and Elaine quickly hide from the Two Commandments. As night shifts to day, the bartender, who reveals himself to be the Lion's Sin of Pride, Escanor, decides to play Galan's deathmatch game. After a strong swing from Galan, Escanor intimidates Galan and causes him to flee, breaking his own commandment and turning him to stone. After his small battle with Melascula, he turns to Bond and orders him to stay put, to which the latter states that even if he could, he wouldn't. Night falls and Escanor returns to questioning Bond about everything that has happened in the last ten years. The reunion between the two sins is then cut short as King and Oslo arrive. The Great Fight Festival Arc Bond, wearing clothes given to him by Escanor, meets up with Meliodas and Arthur in the labyrinth around Visal. He and Meliodas perform their usual greeting, which is uh, beating each other up and arm wrestling. And Bond notices that Meliodas is much stronger. He informs him that he's there with Escanor and Elaine. He attempts to apologize for attempting to kill Meliodas back at Leonis, but Meliodas deliberately keeps him from speaking, showing that he doesn't see a need for an apology. After a bit of wandering around, he and Meliodas decide to reunite with Elizabeth and the others by simply destroying the wall before it can regenerate and inadvertently blow a hole straight to the goal. When the festivities start, he's paired with Meliodas and they both panic once they realize that Elaine and Elizabeth are participating. His and Meliodas' first opponents are a pair of blue demons, though they win the fight without realizing it when they accidentally kill their opponents while bickering with each other over who has the best anime wife. Once again displaying the collateral damage that is caused by waifu wars. Bond is then surprised to see that Escanor actually attacked Droll and Gloxinia. He then watches as Meliodas takes on the Two Commandments by himself and is trapped inside the giant hands by Droll along with the other contestants. Hawk wants to go help Meliodas, but Bond says that all they would do is get in his way. He's then teleported back to Leonis by Gilfrost along with the others and continue to watch the fight through Gilfrost's crystal ball. When King expresses doubt in Meliodas, Bond reaffirms that Meliodas will always be his captain, demon or not, and that the Ten Commandments themselves called him a traitor. When all the other commandments arrive at the scene to aid their comrades, Bond screams for Meliodas to escape. He angrily notices that Melascula is still alive, but Elaine tells him that this is the only reason she's still alive. Unable to stand by and watch as Melascula prepares to eat Meliodas' soul, Bond leaves to save Meliodas, even though it means that Elaine will die again. Before going, he apologizes to her and still promises to bring her back one day, though she says he has nothing to apologize for. He uses his Zero Sign technique to sneak by the Ten Commandments after having Gilfrost teleport him to the battle, and quickly breaks Melascula's neck and rips out five of her hearts. Meliodas calls him a dumbass, and Bond simply replies that dumbasses stick together. He helps Meliodas up, telling him to stand back. However, Esterosa easily moves past them and stabs Meliodas in one of his hearts. Bond then tries in vain to stop Esterosa from destroying all of Meliodas' seven hearts, seeing himself unable to take Meliodas with his fox's hunt or affect the commandment even in full force and absorbing his strength. When Meliodas' last heart is destroyed, Bond explodes in a cry of anguish, and Esterosa blows Bond's body away to pieces, saying he was being too noisy. Defensive Battle for Leonis Arc Bond is fighting alongside the Holy Knights to protect the Kingdom of Leonis from the Ten Commandments invasion. However, like the other Holy Knights, Bond falls victim to the effect of the Love Commandment of Esterosa, disabling them from attacking. The fight goes on, with the heroes on the losing side, until Merlin arrives to the battlefield to confront the Ten Commandments, claiming that she'll turn them into her guinea pigs. When Greyroad attacks with Breakable Bug, Bond tells Merlin to not use Exterminate Ray inside the castle, but she uses it anyway, killing one of Greyroad's faces. When the Pacifism Commandment doesn't affect Merlin, she reveals that she's not affected by age alteration magics. Bon asks him if she's not human, to which Merlin affirms that she is not immortal like him, but she stops her aging process by stopping her own time with her magic. 
After Merlin reveals the nature of her infinity power, Bond is the only one to react positively. Bond later witnesses Merlin capturing Grey Road and destroying the entire castle in the process. While Hendrickson and Dreyfus fight Fraudrin, Bond is then taken along with everyone in the castle to Merlin's perfect cube. When a revived Meliodas appears in the middle of the battle, Bond is shown happy to see his captain. However, upon seeing Meliodas' evil and sadistic way of fighting and acting, Bond affirms that he is not the Meliodas that he's known. After being completely submitted by Meliodas, Fraudrin decides to use all of his remaining power to self-detonate and eradicate all of Leonis with him. When Meliodas shows no interest in Fraudrin's attempt, Bond asks Merlin what could be Meliodas' intentions in provoking Fraudrin like that. When Meliodas crudely assassinates Fraudrin despite the fact that he surrenders and forsakes his intentions, Bond is shocked by these actions. After the battle, Meliodas tells Bond that he's not going to tell him anything. Without looking at him, Bond gives him a simple pat on the shoulder, saying that he's glad he's still alive, and that he'll gather everyone for the banquet that night for the victory, leaving Meliodas saddened. Some strong, dad, I'm not mad, just disappointed energy coming from Bond. Memories of the Holy War Arc the morning after the battle with the Commandments, Bond joins and treats Meliodas in a friendly way, claiming that he wasn't part of the banquet of the previous night. There, Bond apologizes for his attitude the previous day, asking him if anything's changed between them, to which Meliodas responds that he doesn't need to apologize. When Bond affirms that Meliodas always keeps a stupid and empty face, making everyone worry about him, Meliodas crashes Bond against the wall, destroying his body. Koran Arc Bond then attends a dinner with everyone, staying with Elaine and drinking. Drunk, he forces Hawk to drink too. Bond expresses his enjoyment of all seven of them being reunited and then asks Gother the origin of his cross-dressing habit, leaving him to reveal the experience with Bartra. When everyone's worried about facing Zeldris, Bond admits that he must be his most powerful enemy. Bond then has a discussion with Escanor, resulting in Elaine blaming him for being rude. The next morning, Bond and King spy on the conversation between Meliodas and Elizabeth that ends with Elizabeth leaving very affected. When the three sense Elizabeth's magic and go to the Boar Hat where Elizabeth has cured Merlin from her disease. Later, Bond and the other Sins reunite to discuss the course of action. Merlin states that their next destination is Koran, where dimensional distortion has been generated, preventing anyone to approach Camelot by any means. After this, Bond asks Elizabeth to take care of Elaine. On the way to Koran, Bond tells Meliodas his worries about the next battle, so if they kill Melascula, the origin of the distortion, Elaine will surely die. Meliodas tries to say that he understands his feelings, but Bond asks if he really could understand the pain of having to let the woman he loves die. There, both are interrupted by Escanor, who alerts to them that Elizabeth was acting weird. When the princess reveals memories of her past lives and finally faints, Meliodas cries, yelling Elizabeth will die in three days, surprising all of the sins. There, Meliodas finally tells his companions his history with the original Elizabeth 3,000 years ago, and how both were cursed in an eternal loop of pain, with him living forever and her reincarnating as a human every time she dies in front of Meliodas, which has already happened 106 times. Upon learning this, all the sins except Merlin are in shock. Bond is shown in silence, now aware of his friend's suffering, and I'm sure he feels like a right idiot for asking him if he knows what it's like to lose a loved one right before this happens. When the Sins finally arrive at Koran, Meliodas is tricked by an illusion of Zeldris and attacks it. As a result, Meliodas is trapped inside the Antan no Mayu. Bond recognizes it as Melascula's technique and jumps to save Meliodas, but he couldn't prevent the Dark Sphere from taking Meliodas away. There, all the skeletal remains from Koran's citizens come back to life by Melascula's magic. Initially, Bond has no problem fighting them, but when Melascula empowers them with Meliodas' energy, the skeletons rapidly overpower and seriously hurt Bond. Escanor calls Bond unfortunate for being defeated by such weak opponents. Bond tries to warn Escanor that they're about to attack him, but the Lion Sin manages to eliminate all the skeletons without any problem, stating that keeping calm is a privilege of the powerful. After Dien ends up being possessed by Koran's spirits, Merlin states that they must attack her with the intention to kill, and Bond says to Dien to not blame him for that. However, King intervenes to prevent them from hurting Dien. When the spirits force Deanne to hurt herself with Gideon's tip, Bond tries to use his snatch to remove Gideon from her, but he's unable to do it. Bond is saved by Elizabeth and Elaine, who suddenly appear on the battlefield. Bond reproaches Elaine that she must go back inside for her health, although Elaine says that she was worried about him and the others. When Elizabeth reveals that Merlin used to call her Big Sis Sis, Bond and the others are shown surprised. Melascula suddenly appears and claims that she'll judge them all, taking the form of a giant snake. Melascula states that she doesn't like to take that form for aesthetic reasons, to which Bond says that it looks much better than her former appearance. There, Melascula attacks, catching him in her jaws, trying to take revenge on him by devouring him. Elaine tries to save him, but with no result, and Bond says that she must not force herself. However, her feelings allow Elaine to make her wings grow and take Bond away from Melascula. Bond affirms that he's the one who's always being saved by her. 
When Meliodas suddenly unleashes all of his demonic power to break free of Melascula's imprisonment, Bon is shown very conflicted. He then proceeds to get out of Elaine's arms and attack Melascula, affirming that he could kill her by taking out her last heart. However, his fox's hunt has no effect. Melascula explains that she can move her heart to any part of her extended body at will, before Bon gets hit from her deadly poison. Despite his immortality, the poison corrodes Bon's soul, confirming to Melascula that there's no way out of her acid poison. Bon tells Elaine to stay away, however, Elizabeth approaches without inconvenience and heals Bon with her invigorate. After Melascula is finally overpowered by Deanne and King, Elaine corners her and claims that she must be killed even if it means that she must die too. But Elizabeth manages to remove all of Melascula's demonic miasma and returns her to her original form as a little harmless snake. After Meliodas and Escanor's fight, Bond stays away from the others, blaming himself for not being of any help in the battle. Elaine hears his thoughts and comforts him with a kiss on his head. Prelude to the New Holy War Arc Bon appears in the middle of battle between the Sins and Chandler. When this battle's about to kill everyone, Bon manages to take King, Deanne, Meliodas, and Elizabeth out of his attack. When Chandler asks who's interfering now, Bon claims that it's a human. When Chandler takes his guard down, Bon catches him and tells King to attack. Bon takes the hit of his increase along Chandler. Bon laments the cruel words he said to his best friend without even stopping to think about the suffering that was happening and only worrying about his own problems, asking for an opportunity to ask for forgiveness. Chandler realizes that Bon is immortal, but giving no importance to that, he obliterates Bon and releases his attacks against King and Deanne. Bon tries to stop him, only to be called a weakling and being obliterated once again. As the sins appear to be defeated, Elizabeth heals them all and Gother manages to immobilize Chandler, allowing King to give a final blow with Chastafall. Bon congratulates King for saving them all, but Chandler returns, releasing his true form and power. Recognizing that he can't deal with Chandler in that form, King uses his bumblebee to contain Chandler and asks Bon to take everyone out while he's distracted. Bon refuses to let him fight alone, to which King states that that'll only hinder him. Bon, along with the rest of the group, are saved from the Chandler attack by Droll and Gloxinia, who take them away back to the Boar Hat. After safely getting away, Bon goes with Elaine, praising her for her previous actions. Elaine says that she's glad to see everyone safe, but Bon says that there have been sacrifices. Elaine says that she can hear the hearts of Droll and Gloxinia until their deaths and say that he must not feel responsible for them. Bon says that he can do everything he can for her. Bon suddenly feels Chandler approaching the Boar Hat and goes outside with the others to see Meliodas finally awoken. Bon is worried about him returning to his former self, trying to remind him that he's a member of the Seven Deadly Sins. Meliodas, however, retains all of his memories with them, calling them his previous friends. Bon is shocked when Meliodas declares that the Seven Deadly Sins are officially disbanded, and even more shocked when he declares that he'll become the new Demon King to save Elizabeth before departing with her and Chandler. When Merlin reveals that Hawk is a living portal to Purgatory, Bon personally volunteers to go and retrieve Meliodas' lost emotions, despite knowing that he might not succeed or even return from such a journey. Before leaving, Bon asks King to take care of Elaine. New Holy War Arc while the war is occurring, Bon has been wandering Purgatory for an unknown amount of time, decades or centuries even, searching for Meliodas' emotions. At some point, Bon almost lost his self, having become a fox-like black creature fighting other monsters like him, but he manages to regain his humanity by remembering Elaine. His appearance has changed, his hair having grown extremely long, reflecting the signs of the passage of time. He wanders around in the extreme conditions of the place speaking to himself, when suddenly the ground cracks wide open, making Bon fall down into a deep chasm. A dragon-like monster jumps in after him and attacks. He and the beast fight fiercely and continuously for another few decades until it comes to a halt, surprising Bon, who believes that the creature grew fond of him. Bon wonders where Meliodas could be in this place and expresses his desire to see his woman again. Then a voice agrees with him. Bon looks for the source of that voice when he notices that the dragon has disappeared. It's revealed that the dragon was, in fact, Meliodas' emotions all along and they seem to have gone back to their true state, still longing to be reunited with Elizabeth. Meliodas and Bon start talking about the Purgatory. When Bon reveals that he went there to look for him, Meliodas asks if he knows a way out. Bon realizes that uh, he never quite figured out how to return once he found Meliodas. And Meliodas is of course disappointed in his stupidity. Meliodas asks him how he could think to jump into Purgatory without an exit strategy, and Bon's all like, what's an exit strategy? Bon says that he couldn't leave him alone in such a place. Meliodas is happy to at least have his friend with him in that horrible situation. So, at least both of them are pleased, somewhat, a little bit more. Bon and Meliodas get going to find a way to return. But Meliodas also suggests they should look for something to cover their nudity. They're naked, by the way. But Bon reminds him that in this place, even the armor that they wear ends up disintegrating. 
Meliodas then shows him the two kinds of creatures that inhabit the Purgatory. One of them, the alien species which evolved to survive in Purgatory, can be made to use suitable clothing. Bond tries to capture one of these creatures, but his speed allows him to avoid it completely and go after Meliodas. Seeing how the creature manages to knock him down easily, Bond asks what happened with his monstrous force. Meliodas understands that being only the emotions of the real Meliodas, he'll only end up delaying Bond. Even so, Bond affirms that he'll carry him with him. He tries to use the fox's hunt on the creature, but it returns to avoid it with his speed. Bond begins to give chase, being unable to catch it. Taking a rest from the persecution, Meliodas asks him how much he must have suffered in purgatory with a body of flesh. Bond tells him that he lost count how many times he was about to surrender, spending the first hundred years reliving from burning to ashes, frozen to the bone, and rotting from deadly poisons. However, after 200 years, he ended up getting used to all that, even being able to sleep in the process. There, Bond manages to wait and use a quick blow to finally kill the creature. While making new clothes with the skin of this creature, Meliodas thanks Bond, saying he's incredible. Bond tells him that when Merlin told him that the Demon King had captured him, he hoped he was locked somewhere. Meliodas explains that at first it was like that, but in the end he managed to escape and ended up giving up on finding a way out and became a monster. Bond asks him if the Demon King is okay with letting him wander with the possibility of finding the exit, giving Meliodas the conclusion that the Demon King is the one who watches the exit of Purgatory. After finishing their new clothes, Bond and Meliodas decide to start their escape mission. While touring Purgatory, Bond asks him what he wants to do after having returned to the real world. Meliodas tells him that he wants to break Elizabeth's curse and drink enough Barnya to fill his eyes, and Bond says that he will revive Elaine and drink enough Aberdeen to bathe in it. But their conversations cut short when monsters attack them. Bond manages to save Meliodas and use Crazy Hunt to kill all the monsters. Noticing the presence of another, Bond kills it from a distance, affirming that the flesh of that creature is the most delicious. While they eat the creature's flesh, Bond mentions that they don't really need to eat being immortal souls and fake bodies, but that doing it makes them feel alive anyway. Meliodas says that even though they've spent 500 years without seeing each other, he doesn't stop being surprised at his ability to adapt to things. Bond says that he had no other option, but Meliodas says he's not surprised that he tried to adapt, but that he could. Bond and Meliodas begin to talk happily about what they'll do when they find the Demon King and escape. Bond says he'll play games with Elaine and all of the Seven Deadly Sins will meet in the Boar Hat while Meliodas does not cook because his food is terrible. But then, there, both notice the presence of some individual observing them. Meliodas launches to attack his spy with his sword, but all of his thrusts are avoided. Bond tries to catch him, but the spy just leaves his hand on the bones and catching him in the back. Bond asks if he's a subordinate of the Demon King. The spy denies it, but says he can take them both to the Demon King if they both help him, too. When asked what he wants help with, Bond and Meliodas are shocked to see that the individual, calling themselves Wild, looks identical to Hawk. Wild declares to be a warrior in search of his younger brother. Bond and Meliodas wonder if this brother is Hawk. Wilde says that his brother is called Mild, but that having been sent to another world since he was born, he might not remember his real name. Realizing that Hawk could be his brother, Wilde breaks into tears of joy. In the face of the impending sandstorm, Wilde takes Bon and Meliodas to his home and offers them wild boar broths. After the sandstorm passed, Bon, Wilde, and Meliodas ventured to the Demon King. On the way, Bon asks how long the Demon King has been in purgatory. Wilde tells him he's been there long before he was born, millions of years ago. Meliodas stops to talk to Bon and Wilde about their younger brothers, Zeldris and Estorosa. Bon is surprised to learn that Estorosa is his brother, claiming that they have no resemblance, to which Meliodas says he can't help him in that, leading Bon to ask him to continue his story. Suddenly, a voice interrupts him, claiming that he doesn't remember anything about Estorosa either. This is revealed to be the Demon King. Bon is surprised to see the huge size of the Demon King, to which Wilde says he's grown steadily, consuming the life of Purgatory. After Wilde fails to attack him, the Demon King unleashes a blow on all three. Bond manages to evade and catch Meliodas half-fallen, surprised of the incredible power of the Demon King. Bond uses his physical hunt on him, but to his surprise, his own energy is absorbed instead. Upon falling with his exhausted strength, Bond is stopped by Meliodas after the Demon King threw lightning bolts all over the place. Meliodas reveals the power of his father, aka the Demon King, to be the ruler. While 60 years pass in Purgatory, the trio still battles the Demon King, being defeated every single time they charge at him. After defeat number 6093, the three stop to eat. Meliodas begins to think that maybe Elizabeth won't die if he doesn't return, but Bond convinces him that they shouldn't surrender until they escape and can eliminate the curse of Elizabeth and revive Elaine. 
Bon and the others returned to launch themselves against the Demon King, only for the same succession of events that led to be easily defeated by the ruler is repeated. When they're thrown away, Bon discovers that his powers could also heal, as Wilde's wounds had been healed by him giving some of his own life, a fact that develops after the 60 years of power being absorbed by the Demon King. However, upon analyzing what happened during their fights, they also discovered how to get around the Demon King's power, and they charge at him once again. Bon, instead of using his Snatch to try to steal the strength of the Demon King, uses it to give him his own power instead. This surprisingly ends up weakening the Demon King. Meliodas reveals that the ruler actually reverses the effects of enemy abilities, turning damage and debilitation into power and healing. Bon uses his infinite life to keep weakening the Demon King to allow Meliodas and Wild to reach the exit of the Purgatory. However, the Demon King manages to revert the effect by switching off his power. Meliodas then tries to battle the Demon King himself as the gate to the real world is revealed. Bon refuses to go, saying that he can't leave the captain behind, but Wilde decides to use Wilde full throttle, ultimately leading to his death, as this technique is considered by him to be his trump card, consuming all of his life force to increase his power. With this technique, he's able to hold off the Demon King, giving Bon and Meliodas a chance to escape. As they fall down the exit to the real world, Bon and Meliodas lament that in the end, Wilde and Hawk can't meet. Bon wonders if they should tell Hawk about Wilde's song. However, the Demon King manages to grab Meliodas from Purgatory to prevent him from escaping. Bon tells Meliodas he's going to return to help him, but Meliodas assures him that he'll escape by his own means and that he just has to get ahead and help everyone. Bon tells them that he trusts he'll follow him while following the path to the real world. Bon emerges in the real world through Hawk, with Deanne, King, and Elizabeth right after their battle against Mael. In his thoughts, Bon tells Meliodas and Elaine that he's returned. Elizabeth's happy to see him safe and asks about Meliodas, to which Bon says he's on his way to return with her. Bon tells his companions that they should go to where Meliodas is and that he'll reach them after finishing a pending issue. In the middle of the battle of the Search and Destroy force against the Demon Clan army, Bon catches Elaine after she fell due to using all her power in the fight, killing all the demons that attempt to devour her. Upon seeing him, Elaine delights in his return, assuring that it's not a dream. Realizing that she used too much power and that her temporary life is fading away, Elaine affirms that despite everything, she's happy since the only thing she wanted to be was in Bond's arms one last time. There, Elaine dies in Bond's arms for the second time. However, Bond refuses to let her go, insisting that this isn't the end and that he intends to sustain it for a much longer time. He then uses his gift to transfer the power of the Fountain of Youth in Elaine. Regaining consciousness, Elaine asks him to stop, because losing the Fountain would mean giving up his immortality. Upon completion of the transfer, the power of the fountain manages to return Elaine to life permanently. Elaine asks Bon if it's really okay to have lost his eternal life, to which he tells her that he doesn't care as long as he can fulfill the promise he made to her. After a passionate kiss, Bon reminds Elaine of what he said about one day he would steal her. Bon then goes to Camelot, where Meliodas has been possessed by the Demon King right after absorbing all the Ten Commandments. The Demon King mortally wounds Hawk, calling his face very irritating, and declares that he sends him to where his brother is. However, Hawk is snatched from his clutches by Bon, who promises to take the Demon King out of Meliodas' body. Bon throws Hawk with the other sins, and King warns him that even being immortal, there's not anything he can do against the Demon King by himself. There, Bon reveals that he's no longer immortal, since he gave up the power of the Fountain of Youth to revive Elaine. The Demon King tries to attack him with his claws, but Bon uses his speed to evade and punch him in the face, but the Demon King manages to block him, having to stop his storm in the process. The two then enter a physical contest. After receiving a knee from Bon, the Demon King responds, and Bon manages to evade and respond with many short and quick blows. After regretting having not destroyed them in Purgatory, the Demon King continues his fight against Meliodas and Bon. In both scenarios, their attacks are completely bypassed. Bon responds with a strong kick to the head. Bon continues to strike hard at the Demon King, this time responding with a headbutt, but Bon takes his head and stomps it into the ground, causing a great impact. There, Gother comes up with a plan and manages to use his invasion and take Elizabeth and the other sins minus Bon into the spiritual world where Meliodas confronts the Demon King. At the doors of his demise, the Demon King begins to fly across the battlefield in a state of madness. A returned Merlin recognizes that he's in a desperate attempt to take Meliodas to the death with him and states that they must rid him off of Meliodas' body. Bon manages to intercept and stop his death throws and then sends him flying with a kick. King, Elizabeth, and Merlin then combine their techniques in their combined technique, Triple Prison, leaving the Demon King trapped. It, however, manages to break free in a berserk state with his ultimate technique, Meat Darkness, striking the ground with great force. There, Deanne surprises him with her Diamond Tower, giving Bon the clear to give the Demon King the final blow. Bon climbs up to the top of the tower and screams to take Meliodas' ass back there. With a strong fist, he sends the Demon King breaking through the diamond. He's finally defeated and expelled through Meliodas' body. 
With the real Meliodas back in his body, Bond says that he's been beaten to hell and back. Elizabeth goes with the rest of the Sins and heals Meliodas and Bond's bodies. Despite their victory, the Sins are saddened that with the destruction of the Demon King, they've missed the opportunity to break Elizabeth's curse. She tells them that this is already done, that what she most wanted was for Meliodas to be the same since she would never see him again if he became the Demon King. There, Meliodas surprises everyone by claiming that he acquired the power to break the curse while escaping from Purgatory. Gother tells him that making a joke like that can get him killed, but Meliodas says he's not kidding. Merlin uses Discovery to make the curses of Meliodas and Elizabeth take physical form. Meliodas assumes the appearance he had when he was the Demon King and tells Elizabeth that despite having made her wait 3,000 years, he's finally going to fulfill the promise he made her. Meliodas easily destroys the two curses, and with that, Elizabeth embraces him with joy since his long journey has ended, but it's rectified that their trip together has only begun. Demon King Arc With the defeat of the Demon King and the curses of Elizabeth and Meliodas destroyed, the Holy War ends finally and the Sins return to Leonis. Bond and Meliodas find Hawk in an alley eating garbage, asking what he's doing in a place like that. Hawk tries to convince him that he's another pig, but Meliodas says that there aren't any more talking pigs, so this is kind of a dumb lie. When he tells her that Elizabeth is worried about his way of acting, Hawk admits that he feels pathetic for not having been of any help during the Holy War, and having had to be saved by Bond and Elizabeth. Bond and Meliodas comfort him by saying that despite knowing he's weak, he always puts his life in danger without hesitation to protect his friends, which is a true display of bravery. The three of them then attend the party at the new Boar Hat, despite Bond complaining about whether someone will go to an inn the night after the end of the Holy War. The Boar Hat ends up full anyway, and Bond takes charge of cooking with Elaine at his side. The day after the end of the Holy War, Elaine and Bond then join Elizabeth and the rest of the Sins in the Boar Hat to their journey to stocking up across Britannia. As they make up a picnic, the women wait while the men go for food in the forest. Bond uses his power to catch many fish from a nearby lake. He then accompanies his companions to pee together, you know, just like how bros do. When Meliodas says they have to return, King asks him if indeed they will all go forward as the Seven Deadly Sins. Bond tells Meliodas that they're not as fragile as he thinks, prompting him to reveal the truth that he'll soon disappear from this world, something that everyone was already beginning to suspect. Upon returning to Leonis, Bond goes with his friends to a meeting organized by King Baltra. There, he asks Meliodas to marry Elizabeth and become the king. The king, not king, ensures that Elizabeth will have no objection, but Elizabeth rejects the idea. Everyone is stunned when Elizabeth reveals that she plans to go to the demon realm with Meliodas. The next day, Elizabeth and Meliodas have an emotional farewell at the entrance to the demon realm. However, before being able to cross the entrance, a gigantic rock is detached from a nearby boulder and falls on Elizabeth, seemingly crushing her to death. Everyone, especially Meliodas, can't help but look with horror that the curse wasn't broken after all. However, Elizabeth is saved at the last minute by Merlin, who teleported her to safety just in time. Merlin then uses her cursed discovery to reveal that Elizabeth's curse was restored. Meliodas tries to destroy it once more, but as soon as he dies, the curse regenerates again. Meliodas and Bond conclude that this is because as the curse was put on by the Demon King, it continues to exist because the Demon King is still alive. Merlin and Gother wonder how it can be given that the commandments have no vessel. King and Deanne wonder who could be able to withstand the commandments when not even Mael was able to sustain four of them. Elizabeth and Meliodas conclude that Zeldris, the only one besides Meliodas capable of restoring the commandments, had become the vessel of the Demon King. Elizabeth and the Sins return to the Boar Hat to discuss the situation of the Demon King still being alive. Bond states that the Demon King is the one who restored Elizabeth's curse as a payback to Meliodas. When Merlin asks who can be the new vessel of the Demon King, Meliodas claims not to know. There, everyone feels that the entrance to the Demon Realm is being opened again, to which Merlin recognizes it's to invoke a fearsome Endura. King asks Hawk and Escanor to report the situation to the King and the Great Holy Knight, and Bond states that he and the other Sins will face the Endura while Meliodas protects Elizabeth since he's the only one with the power to do it. Bond assures to take down the Demon King at the same time. In the center of Britannia, the Sins face the giant Endura that was summoned. The Endura then releases a big object from its tail that explodes and scatters in a multitude of small objects. King wonders if they're some kind of spore, but realizes that they're too big for that. Merlin then discovers that they are in fact the Endura's offspring. Merlin then teleports to Kurichos and returns it to Bond, telling him that with his new capabilities he'll be able to extract much more power than before when using it. Bond is surprised that Merlin had it and finally claims his sacred treasure returned. Using his recently recovered Kurochos, Bond manages to eliminate thousands of Endura babies with an incredibly extended and powerful assault hunt empowered by the Sacred Treasure's special power, Super Concentration. Bond notes that one of the babies was able to escape to Leonis, and King affirms that they have to take charge, since it will be a great threat even by itself. 
The Endura then launches the attack, but the Sins manage to finish it with the combination of their attacks. Bond gives the final blow using Assault Hunt. In Lake Salisbury, in the middle of his fight with Meliodas, the Demon King notices that something is approaching at high speed. This turns out to be the heads of the Endura that Bond King, Deanne, Gother, and Merlin had launched towards him. Meliodas wonders why they're there, to which Elizabeth says that they've come for him. With the arrival of the Five, Bond reminds Meliodas the seventh rule of the Seven Deadly Sins, come together and work as a team every now and then. The Demon King then attacks the others. Merlin teleports to avoid him while Bond takes Deanne, Gother, and Elizabeth. King uses True Pollen Garden to protect everyone, but is unable to hold on to the Demon King's attacks enough for Gother to use his power, forcing Bond, King, and Meliodas to keep fighting. Suddenly, Escanor, having regained his magic power, stops a lunge of the Demon King with his arm. The Sins together are able to take the Demon King until his limit. There, with the Demon King practically defeated in both the spirit world and the real world, the commandments begin to leave Zeldris' body until they completely detach from him, allowing Zeldris to recover his physical body. However, the Demon King's conscience refuses to let his vessel go and tries to retrieve it. However, Bond snatches Zeldris away before the commandments can possess him again. Meliodas thanks him for that, to which Bond tells him that he owes him ten rounds of Aberdeen Ale. Enraged, the Demon King rises and says that they observe him. The commandments separate and disperse in the surrounding area, beginning to take over every living being, rock, and hill. Thus, the Demon King stands with a new gigantic and monstrous vessel created from the same land of Britannia. As the Sins launch their attack, the Demon King uses Death Zero to immobilize them with gravity pressure. Bond launches his crazy rush along with the other Sins' strongest techniques that Merlin combines into a single powerful attack using power conversion, Unify. The Demon King believes that his power, the Ruler, will protect him, but Merlin reveals that the killer switch that Gother has used is not an attack, but a spell that negates his power. Meliodas sends the attack to the Demon King, killing him once and for all. In the resultant destruction, King uses True Pollen Garden to protect the rest of the Sins. Then, he and the Sins fall out of exhaustion as a result of Merlin's power limit breaker. While everyone watches Zeldris and Gelda fly away, Escanor says it's time to do the same because everyone's waiting for them. Sad, they say they must all return together, showing that everybody has already seen that Escanor's about to die, since his body is burned to the point that it disintegrates and can no longer move. Escanor says that he has no regrets in his life, and thanks everyone for allowing themselves to meet him, and for him to meet them. He gives each person a few last words. He then recommends Bond to loosen up with the whole drinking thing. King of Chaos arc. Upon returning to Leonis, the Sins join in the celebration banquet in the castle. Bond drinks along with his friends and Elaine. Deanne happily states that despite the sadness about Escanor, all the Sins have achieved their goals, with Bond achieving Elaine's resurrection. Drunken, Bond makes fun of how King proposed in the middle of battle, to which King replies that he was the one who pushed him to do it. Deanne ends up realizing that she never knew what Merlin's goal was since she never talked to them about it. Merlin then declares that as comrades of fate, everyone deserves to know and see it. Merlin then teleports the Sins and Elizabeth to Lake Salisbury where they find Hawk Mama in front of the orb of water that used to be the lake. Merlin then says it's time to start. When Meliodas asks her to start what, Merlin surprises everyone by declaring that she refers to Arthur's awakening. As the lake water begins to shine and its light reaches Excalibur, Merlin tells Arthur that she was wrong since the sword was not the one that would kill him, but the key to advancing to his new stage. Merlin uses the key to unlock the door. After an explosion of light, Arthur wakes up having been revived. However, he begins to act strangely as if his body aches. Merlin says that humans are the most polarizing of all races because they possess qualities of good and light at the same time as evil and darkness. Their very existence is the essence of contradiction, and this contradiction is a form of chaos. She declares the human chosen by the Priestess of Chaos will become the ruler of chaos. Meliodas asks Merlin to tell him what she did to Arthur, to which she replies that she's already told him. Her goal is to awake Arthur, but as the King of Chaos. Merlin tells Arthur to not reject the immeasurable magic that was granted to him, but to embrace it. As his eyes turn black, Arthur starts screaming desperately in pain, to which Meliodas flies to help him. However, seeing him, Arthur remembers that the last time he saw him, he had betrayed his companions and allied with the Demon Clan. A strange magic leaves Arthur, wrapping it all up, and the surroundings suddenly transform into a bizarre and meaningless scenario. When all the sins are separated in that deformed reality, Bond catches Meliodas from the strange creatures that attacked him and helps them against them. Arthur then manages to calm down the reality and return to normal. Meliodas then asks Merlin what she did to Arthur and what she means by chaos. 
Merlin explains that chaos is a pure and at the same time impure power of darkness, feared even by demons and light worshipped even by goddesses. An immense power that is believed that a single intention brought about the world and all races from nothingness, including the demon king and the supreme deity. Meliodas asks why she awaken a power that is both a blessing and a curse and demands to know what her desire is. The voice from the lake asks to be allowed to explain instead of Merlin, about the desire made by a single lonely witch who wandered the land in search of chaos. Bon is distrustful of this being who reveals herself as the Lady of the Lake and the Priest of Chaos. She narrates Merlin's past and reveals that Merlin deliberately delayed the spell of the Chrono Coffin for the Demon King to revive, she was the one who reactivated Elizabeth's curse after Meliodas destroyed it, and finally made Meliodas launch their combined attack on the lake in order to reunite the required magic to awaken Arthur, all in order to achieve her goal. Merlin explains that to revive Chaos wasn't enough to seal the Demon King and the Supreme Deity, one of the two had to be completely destroyed to disrupt the balance. When Meliodas reproaches Merlin for using the Seven Deadly Sins to revive a being that may never exist, the Lady of the Lake states that Chaos exists and that they've already been face to face with it for a long time. When Bon and the rest don't seem to understand, the Lady of the Lake reveals that they've been traveling on it and that all that time has been spent waiting for her resurrection, leaving everyone shocked to see that she refers to Hawk Mama. There, Hawk Mama is revealed to be a moss shell whose content, Chaos, is now inside Arthur. Arthur then has another episode-altering reality without noticing it. When Kath shows itself happy to see Arthur, Bon asks who he is, to which Gother explains that they met him in the training cave in Istar. Kath then devours one of Arthur's arms and then it transforms into a monstrous form. The Lady of the Lake tells them that they must retrieve their arm or they'll soon know how powerful even a fragment of chaos is. While Elizabeth heals Arthur, the Lady of the Lake reveals the true identity of the monster, Kath Palug, who is after the power of chaos within Arthur. Meliodas warns Bond to be careful since they don't know the true power of Kath. The monster then asks an affected Arthur if he can eat him now, creating a pocket dimension with the fragment of chaos he devoured, sucking Arthur, Elizabeth, and the Sins into it. As Arthur destroys the dimension in Kath Palog with a new Excalibur, he faints from tiredness in Merlin's arms. Elizabeth tells Merlin that they should take him to the kingdom, but Merlin just thanks her for healing him, and before Elizabeth can reply, she teleports them all away, claiming she can't keep up with them. Upon returning to Leonis, Bond meets Elaine while noticing that Merlin and Arthur stayed behind. Meliodas says they can't leave Arthur and Merlin alone, and that Arthur could become a threat if he gives in to the darkness and loses control of chaos. As Gother expresses his opinion about Merlin's deep desire as well as theirs, and the Sins discuss whether being of different races can understand each other, Bond agrees with Gother that Merlin has saved them many times and mocks that he and King can't see each other in the eyes because humans and other races can't understand each other, to which King says he doesn't count as human. Meliodas says that regardless of anything, they can't leave Chaos unseen, and they must make sure Merlin takes responsibility for what she did. When Gother asks him what he plans to do to Merlin, everyone feels great magic in the direction that Arthur and Merlin are. When Kath, who was fighting Merlin, releases a large bunch of beams from his mouth over her, they're all affected by Meliodas' full counter. Surprised, Merlin is healed by Elizabeth, asking both of them why they're there. Elizabeth tells her that it's not just them, revealing that all of the other sins also went. Merlin rushes to help Arthur, confirming that he's only unconscious. Meliodas then tells Merlin that they'll make her take responsibility for resuscitating Chaos, so that she must devote the rest of her life to protecting and guiding Arthur. Merlin says he didn't have to come all the way here to tell her that, since that was already her plan. Meliodas adds that they also have the responsibility for forgiving her foolishness, so he asks her to allow them to protect her. Merlin thanks them by saying that she's indebted to everyone. As Kath Palog regenerates, King asks if it's Bond's same type of immortality, to which Merlin says he's rather a being that transcends life and death. Kath Palog then manages to trap everyone except Arthur and Meliodas inside visions. Bon and the rest wake up when Arthur begins to absorb Kath. After returning to reality, Bon says that Arthur regained all of the power that Kath stole from him. Epilogue Arc after defeating Kath, the Sins reunite in the streets of Leonis as they decide to part in their own ways. When King and Deanne say that they're having their wedding soon, Bond mentions that they can't know when a fairy and a giant believe is soon. When King asks about his plans with Elaine, Bond says that they'll take it easy on an ale-tasting trip all over Britannia. After always vowing to be friends and comrades, Bond and Elaine leave just like the other Sins. Eighteen months later, Elaine becomes pregnant, so she and Bond return to the Fairy King's forest to await the birth. Sensing the baby pounding, Elaine says she can't tell if it's arms or legs. She says how strange it is that her child grows inside her when fairies are born from flowers and trees. When talking about what they'll call him, Bond says he has the ideal name, Lancelot. Side Story 6 
Bon and Elaine at some point moved to the Kingdom of Benwick along with their son Lancelot, becoming the king and queen. One day, Lancelot reproaches Bon for his lack of disposition as king and allowing for the humans to fool the fairies. Despite accepting his father's apology, Lancelot leaves in shame after hearing that he's grateful for his help. Bon asks Elaine if she doesn't think her son has gotten more difficult lately, to which Elaine says that, you know, he's at that age. Later, when Bon arrives with his family, Elaine is concerned when Lancelot imitates him by drinking Aberdeen Ale, although this doesn't affect him at all. There, a fairy comes talking about what happened outside the kingdom. Bon goes along with Jericho to check on the merchant that mysteriously vanished in the rain. Hearing Bon and Jericho talk about the rumors of humans disappearing all over Britannia, Lancelot asks him to let him help. But Bon orders him to return home. Late at night, Bon asks Elaine if Lancelot's not changed wanting to act like an adult in front of him. Elaine tells him that if he changed, it's because of him, since when he recently went to Leonis, he discovered how everyone respected his father and made him feel proud of him and wanted his recognition. Bon then goes to tuck Lancelot in, telling him not to rush into adulthood and to stay with them a little while longer. The next day, after waking up from a dream about the day he separated from Zhivago, Bon discovers that Lancelot isn't there and is too late to go looking for him, reprimanding himself for not having noticed earlier. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.